So welcome back in our last tutorial video for the new combo scanner and this time we are going to test a very uncommon feature for a more uh, let's say metrology and professional scanner that's the AR mode it means infrared light and this means light that is not really that disturbing for your eyes that means scanning let's say humans or animals they will feel a little bit more pleasant about it. So we are going to create a project folder, IR test, like before, and we are going to try what is possible. There is two really different modes that you have to consider. The portrait mode is actually a mode that is, let's say, manipulating the point clouds from view to view to match to each, each other. That means if you are having uh, let's say flexible object, a human face, rubber or anything that's moving slightly during the scan process, the software will try to align to fit everything together, but of course you will compromise your global preciseness a little bit of this behavior. That's why in technical or rigid objects you would opt for object scanning. You have the possibility to select your alignment as well. Feature based that means curvature based alignment hybrid. This means he tries to find markers if they are there, he uses markers, if not, he will try to use the features and markers, but just global markers, and I have to import them. Yeah, I think it would be cool if I could scan them first and then use them that I scan, but no, in this case, I will have to import them. Um, from, let's say, a different source, or I have to pre-scan the markers in the laser mode and save them and reuse the same one here in the AR mode. Yeah, could be better directly scanning them here, save them and reuse them, like it was before in other ones. I will just try to work feature-based and we're going directly to test what is possible regarding resolution. We are going to the highest resolution to see how the combo will work here. Say apply. And start the scanning. Like in the other scanning processes, you have a preview that you can estimately have an idea what will be the capture areas when you will start scanning. It means if you over brighten or under brighten, like in this case, you see what will be visible. And yes, normally keep your area of interest not over bright or at the limit of over brightening to have the best results. You can as well shorten the scanning distance. You can make the area that will be captured smaller and bigger. Imagine a small cube flying in front of your scanner, a virtuous cube, of course and he can be shortened and prolonged here if you want to just capture a certain area. It's fine for my case. Data quality indicator is a color indicator. You will see it soon after we finish scanning and we can fix the view here in lock view and local and large view that we see something locally bigger but I don't need it. I just will start scanning again. Tracking failed. Yes. Um, in this technical mode, you will really try to put everything together perfectly and he does really have a sensitive job regarding aligning the frames to each other. It's not like in laser scanning mode, where each frame is just a line, a, let's say a pattern of lines that is, uh, let's say, projected on the object and the camera can see areas the pattern and just by moving the pattern over the surface you create a surface in IR it's different he just shooting shells because you can see a bigger area of the surface at once because the IR is projected in a, in a surface like um, way and not just in a line way so you can theoretically just patch these shells together if they have a clear orientation to create a volume but He's very sensitive in the technical way uh, scanning like this and uh, high resolution makes it even worse because of consuming computing powers. And yes, I would have expected I could do that 
but he's not doing that. Okay, nevertheless, next try. We don't give up so fast. We go back to IR mode. Stay in the technical topic that is independent if it is would be made of wood or I am that if it is scannable from the surface situation. We're going to make a new project. AR test is overwritten because there was nothing really important captured so far. Object, we're going to opt for hybrid and take a look if it gets better. We can scan right now. Similar game like before and yes, he is doing that much better than I remember. It had been, for example, working within each and you can see the colors getting green or blue if the qualities get better of the areas you capture that is a good sign you stay a bit more time on it and it's getting better quality in the capturing and that's it so you are not let's say so much compromised that you cannot directly scan the markers anyway I just go to delete what I don't need like before and work delete say yes and because we want to see the highest possible quality we are going to use the point optimization here as well like before we seen in 0 0.05 it got better so it should help here as well And that's not bad for a resolution of 0 0.2. I got to admit, it's not perfect, but it should be usable. So, in this case, I'm not expecting a really big change. Um, yeah, there was a high filter. We are just going back, and we are just made for the low filter. There. And what is interesting. Here is possible to create a watertight model, a semi watertight model, compared to the laser scanning. So, why? I think it would be cool to have it in any case because sometimes it is useful. But okay, we are just fine. And we say for technical uses, it's okay. If you want to know the workaround importing and exporting scans of coordinate systems, I will show you that, that's really fast. Maybe we need it one day. You can as well use a coordinate system, for example, scan with an FreeScan um, Pro, and this have a very good, let's say, mm, preciseness regarding global, global preciseness, and uh, there's a low deviation. You could use it uh, even working with the combo, I think it's absolutely no problem, it's the same format. So let's go and from this one. We go to laser mode in project. We are test. Going to replace it because I don't mind. Resolution actually doesn't play any role. I could leave it as it is because I'm not going to scan points. I'm going to scan markers at least. So I'm just going to capture what is on this turntable. Just going to jump over the preview. As you see everything, I'm expecting that camera brightness level is fine. I could as well take a look here and try to see if there is a over brightening or under brightening. What is less likely? I have here three steps and I could change. I'm going to confirm this optimization of the markers and going to save them here in a special folder, markers in a P3 format, laser markers. You see how, the, how they are saved. We create a new project, we override it, yes. Um, we import that We will import that marker file that we created. And 
here they are. Working already without pre-screening them. The rest is history, you already know it. So it's possible to import markers and to directly scan them. I'm not sure why I didn't see that the first time, but that's a good why reason to make these videos as well. So maybe the most important use for the IR mode is not technical scans because there is just a few cases where it makes sense, there is a benefit because of the light wavelength and so on. It's mostly because there is people who want to scan in medicine uses um, two things, technical stuff and for example human, uh, let's say body parts and that's mainly in, in prosthesis when it comes to orthopedics or other stuff uh, around. So it's mostly used, I, I guess, for um, scanning organic shapes and we're going just to demonstrate that and override the test folder and herefore we are going to use portray. Resolution doesn't matter so much but you will see that right now I'm able to scan really fast some shapes like my hand on the table and uh, it is not so sensitive regarding tracking. I am able to go very fast and he's just still fine with very low information and just if I leave the area where there is any shapes that he can handle, he's just start to lose track. So this is a great feature for medical uh, use. I'm just able to calculate that mesh and I could use it for any kind of uh, modeling of prosthesis or I'm not sure, some protection for my arm, whatever. What is cool about it, we can maybe test it right now as well. If there's small movements, it's still not falling down. It still finds a way to keep the whole um, data, let's say, consistent. Of course, there's created some deviation because there's two points of time where the shape was changed and actually you have two shapes that are transient, but he will try to fix it somehow. And yes, that would be a result that we created. So we just do it just fine. And we are going to retest it. So I have my hand here, scanning my hand, slightly moving my finger up, moving it back where it had been. Okay, this was too fast, too much. But be sure I'm not able to keep hold on. Um, in a, in, a, in a, let's say, position that is without any changes. And I'm going to tell him, try to do something with it. And you see the finger is totally blurred out, that means he has moved quite a lot during the process. And you see that this was too much at least, but he was still able to bring it together to something, but moving too much isn't possible. So such an extreme like a moving object is having its limits. Let's do it once again, trying to hold the hand as, as stable as possible, but be sure I cannot hold my hand, the arms up, um, in, in the right position for microns. I'm surely not able not to move at all. Here I just do my best to keep it calm. But I can tell you nobody is capable to keep one position in the tolerance of some microns is not possible. And let's see with the normal movements during, mm, let's say, such a period that are for sure zero point, 
I know, shoot, 0 0.5 of movement that you don't see because it's small, but for the scanner it's all visible, it's getting you into trouble or not. And no, it's not getting you into trouble, you still see the fingers. And let's try to match the result. And it's okay, it's a bit blurry because I really started to move around a little bit. But it's a model. And I'm not sure if the result is so stable like scanning with the Einscan H. And with Einscan H I did scans of people and I, I realized that they were moving quite a lot and he fixed it somehow. Don't ask me how and <laughs> with which logic, but the results was much better than expected. Here it's not that stable and I think one important part of that is that he's not scanning color. It means he's not able to scan texture. The infrared light is not capable to scan texture because the light information is different from the environmental light and the same is for laser. So in the, in the age he can use the texture of let's say the color information to orientate himself and get more references to get a better result and this is not possible with the combo but I got to say for orthopedics and normal prosthesis for it, it's a perfect combination and the laser unit is much more powerful than in anything else and this combination just exists in the combo there is no way to do it differently so with an scan H you might be a bit better in some areas regarding alignment but it hasn't the same resolution because there is a really new IR model in this scanner and on the other hand you are not able to scan technically in a good quality so if you're not pretend to scan people to print them out buy a combo it's a good scanner for prosthesis and orthopedics as well so that's it you know the most important things for working with your combo right now I will make the last video on post-processing, it will not be such a big deal, it's like um, in the Einstein HX, but see you there.